All right, so today I have some more ball python eggs that are hatching. So I'm gonna do an egg cutting, pull them out of the incubator, cut them open, and see the results of the pairing. Uh, I actually looked in there, it looked like one little head was kind of sticking out of the egg, and one snake was completely out of the egg. So sometimes, you know, I go for the egg cuttings, and all the heads are sticking out, and it's, you know, not really a surprise when you cut them open. But I think most of them are still kind of in the egg and haven't come completely out. So we'll check those out. And the pairing on this was actually a Coral Glow 100% Het Pied bred to a pastel. And in this pairing, I was just kind of fishing around. Maybe that pastel could be Het for Pied. Sometimes you never know what's kind of floating around in your collection. And as a matter of fact, I was looking through some of my comments and someone asked a question, why did I do a certain pairing? Was I trying to make something new or was I trying to get a hold back? And let me tell you, when it comes to breeding ball pythons, normally what happens is you're going for a lot of the projects like that where you're trying to produce something new or, you know, like my triple head projects or, you know, my scaleless project that takes years and years and years you're trying to actually make it. But sometimes you just end up at kind of at the end of the breeding season where you pretty much paired up all your males and females and then you're like, kind of like struggling to figure out, you know, what to pair up with this male and this female. And that's kind of what I did with this when I paired up my Coraglo Het Pied to this pastel and it's, it's kind of interesting with the coral glows because it seems like every year I produce quite a few coral glows I'll, I'll post them over on morph market and they'll sit there for like a whole month and then just out of the blue I'll have like four or five people everybody wants the coral glows all at once at a certain time it's, it's kind of weird how it, the kind of the demand kind of comes and goes when you're selling the, the ball pythons. So there's definitely a demand for the coral glows. And the coral glows can really change too. My specific line of coral glow has a lot of oranges and purples in the snake when they're hatchlings and they completely transition to kind of a two-tone kind of a yellowish orange with a whole bunch of freckles as they get older so it's it can kind of trick you to look at a coral glow on morph market as a matter of fact when i bought my coral glow i saw this really bright fancy with all, the snake with all the oranges and purples and when i got it it already had changed and i was getting all the freckles i was like wait a minute did you send me the right snake because this snake doesn't look like the snake that i saw over on morph market so sometimes these coral glows can kind of trick you so I'm going to pull those eggs out of the incubator. Let's cut them open and check them out. All right, so here we go. Box fresh out of the incubator. This was actually my pastel number one, bred to my Corglo 100% Het Pied. And I actually had a question, someone asked another question in my comment section. <laughs> and uh, every now and then I kind of screen through the questions to kind of see what people are asking. Someone asks me, how often do I check on my eggs during incubation? And I've gotten to the point where I haven't been checking on them at all. So let's see what we got here. So the only thing I do to my egg boxes is about a week before they hatch, I just kind of crack the press and seal a little bit. But it looks like we got two heads sticking out and one snake completely out. Take a look at that. So we do have some hidden gems in there. <laughs> That'll be a surprise. So kind of one of the things that always kind of is for me, it's kind of hard is to figure out if the core glows have pastel in them or not. So take a look at this one. This one right here is completely out. Looking good, looking good. And take a guess at what that one is. <laughs> that one's pretty easy to identify. Uh, yeah, when you only have one or two teens, there's not many options. <laughs> this one is a pastel. So we can get we get normals, we can get pastels, we can get coral glows, and we can get coral glow pastels. This is a really good looking pastel. Really kind of a jumbled up pattern. Almost looks like super pastel because of the highlights, but there's no way it could be super. Usually with the super pastels, the head is like really super light, but this is a really pretty intense pastel. Just pretty nice. And we'll see once they shed out, this thing probably will get pretty yellow once it sheds out. Looks good. Look at how fat and chunky this guy is. <laughs> that's pretty chunky right there. All right, so that's the first one. That's not an egg cutting. <laughs> that's an actual snake right there. All right, so we got one eggshell. We can pull that one out. All right, so for these others, I am going to 
put down a little bit of paper towel here. Let's move it down a little bit. And we'll pull one out. I got my scissors. All right, let's take a look at this one. This guy's head was sticking out a little bit. All right, let's take a look. This one. All right. Let's see what this guy is here. Sometimes, you know, with the, the pastel, sometimes with the pastel core glows, you may be able to tell the pattern. The pastel can kind of jumble up the pattern a little bit. So, this one, uh, this one's pretty light. Usually the core glows have uh, kind of a, a regular pattern on the side. That's a pretty light core glow though. That could be a pastel core glow right there. Uh, it's either a core glow or a pastel core glow on that one. So far we have a pastel and that coral glow. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting all gooped up here from these eggs. Alright, let's take a look at this one. Yeah, I used to check on my eggs and kind of drain all the moisture from the press and seal through the season. And I don't do any of that anymore. I just, uh... Wow. Oh, you know what? Uh, that core glow, I think that core glow may be uh, where my dinker came from. This almost looks like, uh, kind of looks close to my dinker. <clears throat> I have yet to produce another one like that dinker. Just a really unusual. That one's pretty obvious. <laughs> that is a normal. A lot of times on the normal, you can tell if they're het pied uh, by looking at the tracks. On the, you can almost see the belly a little bit, but once he comes out, if he has really strong tracks, usually that's a good indication that it's het for pine. Really good looking normal. So it looks like we have a normal uh, pastel and a coral glow possible. Coral Glow Pastel. Alright, so this one's going to be real goofy. <laughs> Alright, this one has a lot of liquid in it. Let's see here. Super goopy. I'm kind of hoping we hit a, uh, a Pied. Or a Coral Glow Pied. We could possibly hit a Coral Glow Pied. If that pastel would be het. Oh, uh, I don't know about this one. That's a coral glow. Uh, <laughs> really goopy. Uh, I can't tell. This one looks, it's kind of interesting. Look at the difference between these two. There's a huge difference. I think this one is the pastel. Look at how bright it is. Super bright. I think this is a coral glow, this is a pastel coral glow. And the more you kind of open up the, the new snakes and look at the, the, the snakes, especially from the same clutch, a lot of times you'll be able to kind of ID the, the ones you already looked at a little bit better. All right, so that's pretty cool. I'm pretty confident in those. So here's one with his head sticking out a little bit. <laughs> All right, so I had a sneak peek at this one before I brought him out. Take a look at this one. Pretty good odds so far, I'd say. Look at how bubbly this one is, wow. Bubbly and goopy, really goopy. All right, so based on my last two, I would say this one is just a coral glow. Not as yellow is that, what I think is a pastel coral glow. All right, so we're down to two more eggs. Let's see what we get. Man, this is some, <laughs> this is a messy job here. But it is exciting. So, yeah, so three Coral Glow, Coral Glow combination, Coral Glow, well, one Pastel Coral Glow, I think, and two Coral Glows, I think, maybe. Sometimes it can kind of trick you too. Once they shed out, a lot of times you'll, you'll be able to c compare them a little bit better. Another Coral Glow! <laughs> I have some Coral Glows this year. Awesome! P 
People are like fighting over these, especially if I only like produce one or two core glows, people are like fighting over them like crazy. So take a look at that, it's pretty nice. Can't quite tell if there's pastel in that one. Uh, if we could compare them to this one, I think there is pastel in this one. I think both of these are pastel coral glows, maybe? It's kind of hard to tell in the bubbly goop. Uh, usually my ID is really bad when it comes to looking in the eggs and really kind of being real goopy like that. And what's funny is that when I look back at the video, uh, you know, when I'm processing the video in, uh, in Adobe Premiere, a lot of times you can actually see better on the camera. <laughs> you can get better contrast. Uh, versus, you know, just kind of looking at it here under the lights, which is weird. It's really weird. All right, we got one left. So we ended up with four coral glows, a pastel, and a normal. <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. Let's see if we can get another coral glow. All right, pretty good odds. I've been hitting the odds really good this year. Some years, it's weird. It's like the luck just kind of follows you. Sometimes you have really bad luck, sometimes you have really good luck the whole year. Wow, this is a... Uh, uh, really unusual looking, I think it's a, an unusual looking pastel. Looks like he's okay. That one's pretty wild, almost like it has my dinker gene in there. This one almost looks like it has calico or some. There's no calico in the pairing. But it's a really, really scrambled up pastel. Uh, probably one of the most scrambled up patterns for a pastel that I've actually seen. So, wow, that's fantastic. So, only one normal. And uh, usually on the normals, you can tell if they're het pied real easy. So, 50 50 chance on that one. So, all these will be. 50% uh, het pied too, so that's what that one, that, as a matter of fact, that one, um, uh, the last one we looked at, the, the pastel with the really crazy pattern, that could be from the het pied, I bet that's what that's from. Uh, sometimes the het pieds will kind of scramble up the pattern a little bit like that. Uh, that's pretty good results for that one, not too bad. So that's another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I have 20 hatchling tubs left. <laughs> Getting down to just the last few tubs. And then my next clutch that's going to hatch like in a week, that was my um, uh, fire pied bred to my pinstripe pied. But I only got two good eggs on that one, so that'll be kind of interesting. I'll get pieds for sure. Maybe I'll get the, uh, the pinstripe fire pied, which would be crazy. And then after that, I have some possible visual desert ghosts that are hatching. A uh, whole bunch of eggs in that one. Hoping to hold back some of those if I do hit some, uh, especially if I hit like a super pastel desert ghost visual. <laughs> I'll definitely be holding one of those back. All right, so I'm going to keep these in the box here, put them back in the incubator for a couple days. And then once they come out, I'll do another video and we can give them names and put them up in the hatchling rack and really check them out a little bit closer. Alright, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for coming along, and I will see you next time.